Welcome back to the Write It Down podcast. I'm your host, Brooke Murata, on the mic with Veronica Stone. Veronica, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we clarified before we went on air how to pronounce your name because I'm sure you've been like called so many different things. And I was at first when I like, read, I was like, Ronika, Ronica, <laughs> like you just go through your head. Yeah. So that's yeah, so put fun. Accent were, you choose. <laughs> were you named after your dad? Yeah. So okay. my dad's name is Ron. And then I have three sisters. My oldest sister is Deja and I have one younger brother, but we, apart from Deja, it's Ronnie Christina Stone, Ronna Christina Stone, Ronica Christina Stone, and Ron Christopher Stone Jr. So we're all like little juniors. Yeah. Of my dad. Yeah. How, like so, house. And Deja's just like. She loves it, really. <laughs> she, she loves being different. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Well, that's cool. I mean, I think that's really awesome that you get to carry on um, your dad's name, but you've also carry on a lot of your dad's legacy in athletics. And so obviously, like you have a grand scope of things going on in your life besides volleyball, but I'm excited to be connected with you um, through the San Diego Mojo. I was out there for the brand reveal, which was super great. And I just love watching wow, in that room specifically, there was just so much excitement and energy. And, you know, you girls are really like stepping into this new adventure. And I love that, you know, volleyball is getting more notoriety and you guys are just really kind of um, blazing a trail for that. So why don't we get in more to the nitty gritty of business? And then, of course, we're going to have some girl talk, which I'm super excited about because... <laughs> Already, if you guys could have seen us before the show, it's like we got to get the right lighting. We have to make sure we look good. You never know who's watching. Um, so, so I'm super glad uh, we have the same company in that. But tell us a little bit about your road to Mojo. Yeah, I was playing. I played at the University of Oregon. And after I always had dreams of going pro. And at the time, the only pathway to pro was overseas. And so my first year, I went to France and that was 2020, and he, everyone knows what happened in 2020. Yeah. The world shut down. A little, but it, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it really shut down in Europe. They took that okay. very seriously, as yeah. they should. Um, but it was it was hard being over there, and it put a bad taste in my mouth of uh, leaving my family and missing out on so much. And so after that, I decided I didn't want to go overseas. I played in Athletes Unlimited. I played in Puerto Rico and I saw a pro volleyball federation came out with an article and Tori Dilfer, her, we went to, she's playing for the Atlanta vibe and okay. she was on my team in Puerto Rico, but she, her dad was mentioned. Her dad is Trent Dilfer, yeah. former NFL quarterback. And I saw his name in the article and I immediately called her and I was like, what is this? What's going yeah. on? And she what, gave me biker not up to. In contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, rolling through. yeah. And Jen told me about the league and I was like, I, I'm in like, let's yeah. do this. And then after that, I've w working with the league. I was working with player relations. And so we started hearing a little more info. I had a little more of an inside scoop of what teams were coming about. And when I heard California was coming, uh, it's, I mean, it's been a dream to play in the States, but yeah. to play in my home state was like something I could have never even dreamed of. Yeah. So yeah, once San Diego was announced, I had a couple calls with the GM and here I am. <laughs> You're like, hey, it's me. do you want me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want me on this team? Yeah. Well, I think it's cool because, you know, you're over in France and again, everybody was dealing with a lot, you know, in 2020. And, you know, I think in that time and I don't want to speak for you and like we can talk through this, but like I imagine there's like a little bit of like resentment with like maybe not volleyball as a whole but just like where your life is like your season of life because I know I mean I'm not a pro volleyball player believe it or not but um in my it's not too late. in my <laughs> in my own life like that was just a really hard time for everybody so did you go through a time where you're like yeah I'm done with volleyball this is not it I I wanted to figure out a way to still play. That's why Puerto Rico came to mind. But I knew, I was like, I'm not going back overseas. I can't do it. Like my next offers that my agent was talking to me about, they were great offers, but he was telling me Russia. I was like, okay, well, if I was really sad in the South of France, I can't imagine my <laughs> being lifted anymore <laughs> no like I haven't been who knows yeah, but... yeah. can't imagine being landlocked and enjoying this yeah yeah oh so, 
I, it was more just like with the world shutting down and volleyball used to be like throughout every season of life I had before that it was my escape and then it felt like an imprisonment when I was in there and there was like no escape there was nothing there was no social life because you yeah. had practice and then back to your apartment there was nothing else and I felt like trapped and yeah I wasn't enjoying the sport anymore as a sport that gave me like so much joy and I know I was still talented enough to like continue playing but yeah in that moment I I was having talks about like wanting to come home early and like not even finishing my season because it was so hard and I mean I don't ever see myself quitting anything early so I stuck it through and I'm glad I did but yeah. like props to everyone that's overseas it's not hard like some people love it that's why I always want to tell people like experience yeah. yourself because some people do love it but like I feel like the majority it's it's tough out there so yeah it's hard well you're know. away from everything you know like you're yeah. away from your routine I mean I had uh, one of my best friends play professional soccer in Australia like that's on the that's like a whole different world yeah. it's like I you know, like and hands laid out in the grocery store. I'm like, what type of meat is that? Right. It's like, a complete culture shock. And again, it's an experience that no one's going to be able to take from you. But mm -hmm. in the same breath, I can imagine like there's a little bit of a relief of being like, OK, now we have the opportunity, you know, to be stateside, to be in California. Who doesn't want to be in California, truthfully? Um, and now you're going to get connected. You know, you're connected with the mojo and. So why don't we talk a little bit about your team? Do you have a relationship, a prior relationship with some of the girls on the team or is this all completely new? No, I know almost everyone on the team somehow, some way. Four of the girls I went and played at the University of Oregon with. And so that's going to be so funny. Oh, just so see how everyone changed. Yeah. yeah. It's, one, Willow Johnson, she was my same recruiting class. And then August Rasky was a year older than me and then Morgan Lewis and Carson Bacon were they were freshmen when I was a junior or Carson was and then Morgan was a freshman my senior year but I played with all of them mm -hmm. and then Lindsay Stalzer played with during Athletes Unlimited Noma I played with during Athletes Unlimited and against in Puerto Rico same with Shada same with Henesis uh Newt Sara played with in Athletes Unlimited uh, the only person I feel like I haven't played with, but I think I played against everyone or with everybody except for Tara and Hannah and Zoe. I, yeah, there might be three girls. I... That's going to be so fun, though, like to have like you again, you've already played some of these girls or you've played with these girls. And so I imagine it's just when you're in the same locker room or you're at practice and you guys are really gearing up like 2024 is the y'all's year like. Okay. It's about to pop off. Like we're making history. Like we are the ones that are setting these records right now. No one. <laughs> Literally. So yeah. We're like we're so cool. Straight up OGs. And I think like what's super neat about it, you know, again, is it's the fact that you are like you feel again where you need to be and mm -hmm. you couldn't have stirred this up for yourself. You couldn't have planned this for yourself. Like the right doors open for you and you just felt confident walking through them. So tell us a little bit about how you make decisions in your life. Where do you feel like you get like, I know I'm getting you with that heavy hitter. Like, oh, shoot. <laughs> but, like people out there that are watching or listening. I mean, first of all, people so women, young women especially, are looking up to you, ladies. You guys are creating history. And so I think it's important for all people of all ages, though, to hear, how do you make a sound decision that's just not based out of emotion? Because you seem very emotionally intelligent, but I do know what it can be like when your emotions are like, ah. So how do you find yourself making wise decisions? I think I learned a lot from going overseas and just seeing – in college, you build so many relationships and you're so close and it feels like a family and not like, not that it's not that way when you play professionally, but it is, there's a lot more business to it. Um, and I'm such a people pleaser and I want to make everyone happy, but then sometimes it's at the cost of my own happiness. And mm -hmm. when I went overseas and I think the first time I realized I need to start thinking about myself and making sure that I'm good was my decision to not want to go back overseas not trying to make everyone else happy because that's what everyone expects out of me. I think when I make my decisions, it's like what will make me feel right and the most comfortable. I hate being uncomfortable. And 
I still want like I still I want people to be happy but like how can I do it in a way where like everyone wins I know that's like you can't have it all but I think you can yeah and, and so when it came to me deciding not to go overseas like finding a plan b Puerto Rico which worked for me and I loved my time in Puerto Rico athletes unlimited it worked and I loved my time and like there's so many more opportunities growing for women in sport but I think just like listening truly like when I hear the two options, if I'm between choosing between two, like you feel it and you know right away and you can have conversations and get advice from people. But I think like your gut instinct like tells you right away. And from there, it's like, are you willing to like take that risk and trust yourself or are you going to like spiral into the field of pleasing others? And so I, for me, it's really like costs and reward, whatever. But I started listening to myself a lot more um, and just trusting that I I know me more than anyone else will yeah. and so just going with the decision that works yeah. the best for myself. And I think that's the biggest thing, right? It's like, it could be like making a decision of where to go for school. <laughs> did, did a thumb just pop up on my yeah. screen? Oh, wait, does that happen? Maybe you have an update. <laughs> Earlier when I was preparing for this interview, balloons started popping up and I was like, I don't really know if I like this, that somebody, there could be a third party putting stuff on I my know. screen. So if you saw that, like, comment and subscribe. I I sound fine. Yeah. It's like, who knows what else is going to pop up? Anyways, I'm getting so distracted, but people and their good nature will try to give you advice and they'll be like, okay, well, when I was your age or when I had to make this decision and like, it's people are notorious for this when it comes to like dating, like I'm literally like unsolicited. I didn't ask. I didn't ask. But we're like, oh, well, I knew when this person walked into my life or blah, blah, blah. And I think that's just it, right? Is you're like, no, I know me better. And then there's like a select few people that know me just as much or have my best interest in mind and are going to validate the decisions that I'm making to because you're ultimately in charge of your own life. Like yeah. you can make a decision. Like you could have, you could have quit volleyball. You could have, like, if you really wanted to, like, I mean, that's not in your nature to be a quitter, but you could have made that decision and gone and done something else. Yeah. Um, and you know, you would still probably have fulfillment in life, but deep down you knew that you wanted to continue. So I think that's just super important and empowering, um, again, to, to trust your gut and yeah. to also look to this, the people closest to you for that like extra measure of, I feel but like my screen's about to do something. Like in the same breath, that doesn't mean I've made all the right decisions ever in my life. Like I've made plenty of wrong decisions, but like we were saying, when you learn the best coming from your own choices, like if someone were to tell you something and you went with it and it was the wrong decision, you'd be like their fault, whatever. Like yeah. I myself, but like when you make that wrong decision, it's like, Okay. Like yeah, I gotta no, that. Take a step back. You own it and you learn from it. So I think when it really does come down to you and you do trust yourself, that's the only way. Like growth happens in the uncom there's no growth in the comfort. Well, yeah, right. There's no growth in the comfort zone. Yeah. And that's really how it is. It's true. And like to kind of like echo for like what we were saying earlier about like we don't want to be uncomfortable. I think it's really good to to point out the types of comfort we're talking about uncomfortable there's an uncomfortable of like I'm in danger this doesn't sit right with me I feel like my throat's gonna close that's like an uncomfortability people should not experience that's like like a predatory uncomfortable right yeah. but there's an uncomfortable we're talking about you know in in that growth of just like growing and stretching more of like a growing pain and being pushed and so that type of discomfort is the comfort or the discomfort that's actually good because it grows you to ultimately be where God wants you or, you know, the doors that are going to open for your life. And so I think it's just important for, again, for those listening and especially like the young women that are going to be looking up to you guys. It's like, you guys, you have the power to make really good decisions and you can be trusted. I think if you feel like you can't be trusted, you're going to make distrusting decisions or you're going to make very timid decisions. Um, it seems like you're a very strong woman. Um, so growing up in, in your home, were you the strongest personality? Like what, what's the age order? That's what's tough. Uh, yeah. If you meet my family, it's a lot going on. Uh, so I am not even the strongest personality, but people that meet me are always like, you're so extra. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. Wait till you meet my brother. Wait till you meet my mom. <laughs> yeah. But my oldest sister's 34. Second oldest is 30. 
third oldest is 26, I'm 25, and then my younger brother is 23. Okay. And yeah, I would say I'm the closest with my sec or the sister right above me. She's 16 yeah. months older than me and my brother, the ones that are here with me in Wisconsin. And but yeah, my the family dynamic, we're all pretty loud. But that sounds fun but now. Always, no, it's so fun. And we always compete. Growing up, we had like our stone Olympics and we would, my uh -huh. dad put us through who could do the <laughs> most like push yeah. up and oh my gosh, like jump rope, all this stuff. And we were just going at it. Like, we do not lack a competitive nature. In yeah. Household for Wait, sure. so I bet holidays are fun. Do you guys have something crazy um, planned for Christmas? Are you guys all going to be together? Uh, I was going to go home. I just saw them all. Uh, but I've been traveling, traveling so much and I am going to San Diego pretty soon. And so I just decided that I was going to stay in Wisconsin for the rest of the time that I have left, yeah. train, get ready and be prepared for season. So right. like it's right around the corner. The family. Yeah, it's really right around the corner. It came up very fast. Yeah, well, that's going to be super exciting. We're going to take a quick break to discuss this episode's sponsor. Resist Spirits is a proud supporter and friend of the Write It Down podcast. With brands like FKNG, Bourbon and Vodka, Resist Spirits is a spirits company that creates lifestyle brands for consumers who want to level up and achieve their goals. FKNG is a bold and adventurous brand, not only in its appearance, but also in its taste. FKNG bourbon and vodka are distilled from the highest quality ingredients and processed both in the USA and Mexico with the finest ingredients. You can go to their website, resistspirits.com, resistspirits.com to order your bottles today. Now, back to the show. a little bit I, I know you're in wisconsin for your boot thing so let's talk a little bit about relationships um i also think that young women need to know that there are healthy relationships out there and there's different dynamics that you have to juggle you know you're dating a professional athlete you're a professional athlete so why don't you tell us a little bit about dating in general but also dating in a professional athlete world because it is a different ball game in a sense because there's more eyes on you there's you know unsolicited advice and comments you know yeah. And so how, how do you navigate that being such a young, beautiful woman yourself? I think just trust. I, that's the foundation of every relationship. And we really trust and love each other and appreciate and respect. I think because we're both athletes, we both know what each other is going through, which really helps. And we train together sometimes in the off season, I die. <laughs> I was gonna um, say like <laughs> no one time they like didn't switch the weights they were like it's not your body that can't do it it's your mind I was like, like no it's my body <laughs> no I, was like, I don't think I can get a blow with them I swear but it's really oh. fun. like we have a good time we're very similar almost too similar um but we're always having a good time and supporting each other I think when we make decisions it he really helps me and keeps my mind steady especially when I was deciding if I wanted to go back overseas or even my decision on if I was going to play in a different pro volleyball federation team or stick with Mojo. Uh, he just like makes me really, he's like, what do you want to do? I know yeah. what everyone's saying in your ear, but like take away all whatever the perks may be. Like, where do you see yourself happiest? Like where yeah. is the situation where like you are going to find the most joy and like be the best version of yourself? Like yeah, who cares about everything else to the side and like, Okay, California. Yeah, I can do this. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do hard things. Can, so, is this the longest relationship you've ever been in, or? Yeah. Oh, I wow. never thought. <laughs> I never thought I would be in a long relationship. I don't know why. I like yeah. before that, my longest relationship was like eight months. Yeah. And we met very. We had a mutual friend, and so we had known each other throughout college, but never met in person. And then we were just in the right area at the right time he was training before he left for green bay and i was visiting my me and my sister went to la to visit our friend i posted a snapchat story with the geo tag little swiped up where you at <laughs> where you be girl <laughs> i know and we've really been together ever since it's just wow. crazy it went we became official like june 18th and of 2020 and then I went overseas in August and we did oh, eight cute. And months of long distance <laughs> like, that is hard 
Although yeah. I feel like in the beginning, it's probably better to be long distance because oh. you're getting to know each other. So like FaceTime and texting. But once you've built that in-person relationship and then to be ripped, like mm-hmm. I feel like it's super hard. So maybe timing hardest. wise, it was, you know, obviously it was perfect because here you guys are now in a committed relationship. And so when you guys met, had he had already signed with Green Bay, like you already kind of knew oh. where he was going. And I okay. was going there. And I had just signed. It was funny because they had just posted my um, official signing post for the their Instagram account. And then the next day, the Packers posted his official signing. I was like, we oh. really. <laughs> it was you really bad. are similar. <laughs> no, too similar. I'm like, you do the laundry. Yeah, <laughs> but- yeah, literally. Do you so do you but, guys like so when you fight, who's the first to apologize? Are you guys both like hard headed? Oh, he, he is. He, really? I'm, yeah, you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I feel so You're bad. You're like, but, I feel bad, but I never apologize. So it's fine. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <My bad. laughs> yeah. Well, no, I love that so you guys good. have that authentic, you know, relationship and that you guys are candid with each other. I think that's just the thing right is whether you're professional athletes or not that foundation of trust is huge because we live in such a world where like you have access to anyone and everyone like you know you like a artist like uh, and you can follow them on instagram you can message them they might not respond but you know you can because we live in a very like accessible world and so i think again in both of y'all's positions and professional like as professional athletes beautiful strong people like it's one of those things where that trust factor if it's not there like that could be that could be really rough and so I think that's super admirable what advice would you give to young women that or maybe not even young women all all women of being secure in yourself before you're secure with in somebody else I think I'm a very confident person and like I know who I am, like what I bring. I, I'm i aware of my yeah. flaws. Yeah. I think with that, knowing all of that and before starting a relationship, because I mean, there's been times where I was single and I wanted to be with somebody, but I don't, I was always wondering like, do they have a wandering eye? Like what is going on? Like to the point where it's like, maybe I shouldn't even be with them if I'm, I can memorize their following list. Like literally. Like, like it might be my trauma speaking, but I know. I know what's happening. But it's I think just being secure in who you are and being confident in who you are. Like people can tell me, I can have someone tell me I'm ugly and I'll be like, okay. And Liar. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> or like I have multiple people because of like who he is and what he does. Like there'll be people that I'll just post something on Twitter and the reply will be like, he's cheating on you. I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> okay. no, he's not. Yeah. Like, like I'm with him right now. Like I have access to everything. I, I can assure you. Yeah. But I don't need, yeah, I don't. But you, yeah. Even, I have never, like I had prior relationships where I felt like, like maybe I need to, you know, go through his phone. Maybe I need to plant one of my friends to like, yeah. like his, oh yeah. Kind of crazy. Yeah. But I, I get it. I, <laughs> yeah in there Guilty. like I never have ever felt that way and I feel like if you do feel that way in a relationship then there needs to be a, like it's two-ended communication and to really express yourself that was something I always struggled on I always knew what I wanted to say but I out of fear or like yeah fear of resentment or neglect, I yeah. never would speak my mind and like kept in a lot of hurt throughout like situationships relationships whatever it may have been or I would save it up, be like, I could never say it in person. And I would just right. write a long text. Yeah, just, just a, yeah, quick text, send it, throw your phone, go to bed. Yeah. Like, by the way, two hours ago when we were in person, like <laughs> <laughs> when I could have said it. And so I think now just like when I have something that's on my mind, like speaking about it right away, like let's yeah. clear it. Communication is so important. Trust is so important. Like those are your foundations and your building blocks because I mean, what was that 21 Savage song? And he was like, you can still love somebody and still stab him in the back. I'm like, because that's so true. Like, <laughs> You're like, it's too true. Like, what is you reading my it's diary? Like, like you know, no, it's true. true. And I think that goes back to like the fact that you respect yourself and you know yourself. And ultimately, like 
love yourself. And I think that probably, and I'm not saying this is the only way you can get there as a woman, but like having a strong support system Mm -hmm. or family, like I know for me, like my parents are awesome. And so, and I'm grateful for that. And I'm sure your parents are as well. And to be able to have people in your corner that are like, no, listen, like without sounding like a complete prideful person, you're, you're it, you're the package you're, you know, and knowing that about yourself. And it doesn't mean the person that you're going to date isn't the package either. But if you think they're the world and you think little of yourself, that's when you're going to start to be timid when you have something to say, like, or when you need to speak up on a situation. And so I think the fact that your boyfriend and you, like, you don't have that, like, preconceived notion or anything about each other. Like, you can scoff at somebody being like, yeah, he's cheating. Like, okay. Like, okay. I'd and like I- to see him try. So. <laughs> exactly. Wait, <laughs> like, somebody better than. Yeah, like, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> but again, we say that in jest, but that's not his character to do that in the first yeah. place. But to be able to have that posture towards yourself, I think, is huge in the dating world. So, and, like, knowing what you want out of another person, like, love languages, we had talked about it in, I think, high school, when we were talking about knowing how to speak to your teammates and what each teammate needs, but it's the same. I mean, I think it was made for relationships, like knowing yeah. what your partner's love, <laughs> not for your teammates. <laughs> it's so, love language. We your team book. Yeah. <laughs> we did. It's that. like knowing your partner's love languages. And I always tell my parents, I feel like I give them advice now. I'm like, mom, your love language is quality time. Yes. <laughs> Affirmation. Like, you need that. And same. Yeah. I need to be like, great job. Like someone needs to tell me that. All the At time. all times. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did that look cool? Like, yeah, I, like 100%. Yeah. And so I think really understanding that because if you're, if your love language is that, but their love language is like acts of service, then the way that you're providing love, like maybe not, that doesn't work for them. And like, you can see conflict there and it's, something that will fester in your mind like well I'm telling him this all the time or this blah 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 but like that's not how they receive that's not how they receive love at all yeah Yeah. it's like not just how you take in love and how you give love but what what does your partner partner need yeah Yeah. well and that's that yeah it's funny because I actually just had this conversation with my dad and he was like you know most people go into a relationship thinking it's about them but it's about the other person and so if you're focused on your significant other and he's focused on you, you're both being focused on, but you're both being selfless. And mm-hmm. I was like, I really like that because it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have respect for yourself and like take care of your needs, of course, and only get needs met by them. But it's a level of relationships are hard work and you're supposed to be selfless. And it's the same thing with your team, right? Like you win as a team, you lose as a team. And, you know, as much as like, you know, I watch – um the NFL, but I'm a huge Miami Dolphins fan. So it's just like in my blood and it's just right here. So sorry about it. But in the, <laughs> um, but in the same breath, it's like, you know, I'll, I'll look, I'll watch the games. Right. And if we lose, I literally am like, Oh, that's because this guy didn't do this, 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 and this. Mm-hmm. But then every single time the team is asked about, well, what do you think Tua could have done? Or what do you think Tyreek could have done? Whatever, whatever. And they're like, no, we all could have done this. And I'm like, that's a huge shift. I mean, I'm pointing fingers, but I'm a couch quarterback, right? But I think that's the thing too. And I think you having that position in life and how you view yourself and others is going to be huge specifically for, for Mojo and for the team and the organization that's growing here. Um, Do you find yourself, um, having a hard time to fight your pride? Like, how do you remain humble when all eyes are on you, whether it's because you're dating a famous quarterback or your your notoriety in your own, you know, profession? How do you find yourself being humble? Um, I really like the quote from Billie Jean King where she says, pressure is a privilege. Uh, and that helps me remain positive in like a lot of phases of my life. It's pressure is only given to those who have earned it. And so when people say like, oh, you must be going through a lot. I'm like, I'm in such a cool position. Um, Yeah, maybe you could think of it as stressful. Like there are eyes on you, but like how cool is it that I'm at this point in my life? Like little me would be so excited. Would never have ever thought like I would be like playing in San Diego and being able to be like a franchise player Mm -hmm. and like living in, well, really little me would never have thought I would have been in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but like, yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> winters are harsh though. So. Winters are harsh. <laughs> when, but again, like pressure is a privilege. And if you just like change the way, and it's hard, it's not gonna happen like the flip of a switch. I remember like my sophomore year of college playing was really hard for me because I had such a good freshman year. And I was like, I need to be even better every single right. time. Like I kept putting it on myself. But when you think of it, it's of how cool that is that people expect that out of you. And that's what I tell my boyfriend all the time. I'm like, how cool is it to like, you're replacing a hall of fame, hall of fame quarterback. Like you're in a city where it is the Packers. Like you hear green Bay, like, you fly in, the airport's covered in Packers. You're Straight driving up. around and it's like the street names are from Packers legends. And Cheesehead, like, cheese like everywhere. everywhere. I'm like, that is so I don't cool. get it, but whatever. That's another <laughs> just... <laughs> you're in a position yeah, that you, you're going somewhere and people are expecting greatness out of you. Like it would be way different if you were to go to a different team where no one cares what you do. It's like, get us a win. Like, yeah. no, they're like Super Bowl this year now. Right. And- that might be scary, but at the same time, again, like how cool that you're even in that situation to be spoken about, like with those people behind you. And so yeah. Yeah, there's a privilege and that's really my mindset when I go through like the tough times. Yeah, of course. And I think it's also like kind of what you're talking about with Green Bay and what you guys are cultivating in San Diego with Mojo. It's like you're creating a legacy. Mm -hmm. So while you guys are like the first to do it, right? Which is a huge honor and privilege and street names are going to be named after you, you know, but the, like watch it happen. But these other girls that are going to fill in the gaps in 10, 15 years and, you know, they're going to feel what your boyfriend's feeling, you know, with, with Green Bay and whatever else, you know, God has for you too, but you are creating a legacy and you're, you're paving the way um, for other people to fill that. And that's a, also a, an honor and a privilege to be able to to do that. And you've seen both sides with your dad having huge success and, and with your boyfriend having huge success and you've had huge success. And now you're like, all right, let's take this to the next level for, for women's volleyball. And like, how fun is that? Like, I feel like you're in like the most fun time of your life. Like, yeah. No, it's like, so cool. It's, this I, is it, you know? I think we have something to promote the league, whether we're traveling to try on. Like, this is a Ren Athletics long sleeve. And it's so comfortable, but, like, being yeah. able to go there and try it on and feel it before that the league agreed to partner with them. I'm like, that's so cool that you care about our opinions. But, yeah. like, everything that we're doing, they want the players to be comfortable and they want the players to, like, help build it because we are the ones that are going to be the, at the forefront. And so... It's really an yeah. honor and we're all blessed to be in this position. I'm again, like everything, it's a dream come true. So yeah, I love that. Well, I know I've like chatted with you for a long time and um, I could girl talk with you all day. I feel like we got something going, yeah. but um, we are getting to the close of our show, but I have a couple rapid fire questions before we get to our write it down. Um, the first one I have is what do your friends call you? Ron. Ron. Okay. Yeah, I bet your dad is like so happy. I know. Everyone in my family are just Rons. <laughs> That's hilarious. So you just like, what is the your least favorite thing somebody calls you? It's hard because so many people call me this, but I don't like being called Ronnie. I was gonna ask, do you hate that? My sister's name is Ronnie, and love her. Yeah, she she's a cheerleader, and she's very much at Ronnie, like woo. <laughs> And it's just so great for her. So every time I hear that, I'm like, that is so like the opposite of me. Yeah. Um, like, I hate it. Stop calling me that. But it's okay. It's just like people yeah, say no, that. I, I feel that way when people call me Brooklyn because my name's not Brooklyn. And I have no, like, if your name is Brooklyn, great. Yeah. But I'm like, there's no Lynn. It's not even my middle name. <laughs> so don't do that. Like, it's not, it's not funny. Not, or like Ronika. When they <laughs> Ronika. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like a little, I hate that. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, but it's, it really sucks. Okay. What is your go-to favorite Christmas song? Ooh, this Christmas, Chris Brown. Oh, his... see, listen, I, I get it. I was listening to a Christmas song by LM, um, LMA or whatever. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I mean, I like a little R&B sexualized Santa. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm vibing to this. It's not Holly Jolly Christmas, but no. it's a vibe. I love that song. Okay, um, last one. What did you? What's your biggest gift that you asked for for Christmas? I asked for a camera 
I, did, I wasn't specific on the type of camera. Well, handheld, I want to be able to see my, I want to flip the screen. So when I'm Lighting. taking a selfie, I can see what it looks like. <laughs> Honestly. Not us before the interview looking for the right light. Know, like, exactly. That's what I should have asked for another window in the basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, we are at the point of the show where I ask each guest to give the audience something to write down. So, Ronica Stone, what is your write it down? I did say pressure is a privilege. I do love that quote. Um, but also control the controllables. Mm -hmm. That's another thing when you're really going through something and you feel like everything's going wrong. I always go back to it because it's like, can, did I do everything I could in that moment? Is there anything else I could have done? No, then stop worrying about it. Like yep. control what you can control and the rest will figure it out. I love that so much. And I think that goes back to that mindset of that's what's going to help you make the best decision is you can't toil. You can't sit there and split hairs over things you can't control. You just move forward. And that's the best way to do it. So Ronica, thank you so much for joining the Write It Down podcast. Thank you for having me. I had so much fun. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Write It Down podcast. This podcast is a part of the 1513 Network. You can catch a variety of shows on their website, 1513.com. If you enjoy listening to Write It Down, please subscribe, share with your friends, and if there's any ink left in your pen, write a review. For more content, follow the fun on Instagram by following at W-I-D-P-O-D. That spells WIDPOD. Super cool. It stands for Write It Down Podcast, but it's abbreviated to WIDPOD. Anyways, thanks for listening, and we will catch you later.